Hi, this is Terry Samal from PMML. Today, I want to give you the market statistics for all of the new builds, but also the recently built multifamily buildings across the province of Quebec and for 2023. So we had a hectic year in 2023. Uh, interest rates were on the rise constantly, except for the end of the year where they were tapering off. Um, great possibility of increasing rents and on existing assets, but mostly on recent constructions, meaning all buildings built, multifamily built after 2013 in the province of Quebec. So incredible increases that gave incredible opportunities to several buyers. What I want to do is I want to go through uh, 12 transactions that took place this year, almost one every month, to show you the evolution of the sales of recently built buildings across the province of Quebec and in different areas. Of course, um, a lot of the newer projects that were supposed to be built this year were not because a lot of the contractors stopped the development and altered the development of newer builds. Uh, including concrete uh, built assets and high rises to be able to, uh, to exactly see where the market was going as far as interest rates and make sure that they were doing the right thing by building an asset. So a lot of those assets that were supposed to be built in 2023 are either going to be built in 2024 or 2025. But there was large opportunities, a large amount of opportunities across the market um, so I want to talk to you about these 12 transactions. Let's start with one that took place in January 2023 in the Les Rivières sectors in, the, in the Quebec, in Quebec City. Uh, this time it's Brivia Group, which uh, for, the, for those who know Brivia, Brivia builds uh, incredible assets. They've built uh, all over, including Montreal and here in Quebec City. And they decided to sell this first asset built in 2021 225 units. They sold it to a Montreal-based uh, investment company, which is well known on the market, uh, that has been in business uh, for a long period of time, that has a retail office and also multifamily, a well-established family in Montreal, that purchased this building for a little bit more than $64 million. Um, interesting to see that this building is going to be added into the portfolio. Of course, was paid a very good price, uh, 284, uh, almost 285,000 per door is definitely a good price for a 225 unit. Um, and uh, this is just going to be added into the portfolio. Quebec City is a booming uh, city. Rental value is quite high for newer assets. Uh, if you're looking to buy in Quebec City, there's a lot of portfolios that were sold lately in the past two years. So there's not that much portfolios left over, but there's a lot of residual land available. And I'm thinking about Livy, which is on the south shore of Quebec. Uh, and Livy is in ultra development right now. The, uh, the zoning permits very high uh, buildings. A little bit the same situation that we had in Get Snow versus Ottawa. We're seeing the same thing in, in uh, Livy versus Quebec City. So just crossing the bridge across the St. Lawrence River into, in, River into Livy. And you could find pieces of land to build high rises there, which is really interesting. So when I'm talking about high rises for that area, I'm talking about buildings between eight to 12 floors. So interesting to see that Brivia was ready to sell this asset uh, to this uh, Montreal-based uh, investor. And also this new transaction for that many number of units uh, per permits really to uh, place a criteria on, on the comparables in that area. Um, so this comparable could be, uh, you know, naturally this building that was sold already one year ago, uh, we're talking about two increases. If you're considering the January increase that they had last year and the one that they're going to have this year, right there, I think that the, the buyer did a great job in purchasing this asset. There's so much opportunity to increase rents on buildings in Quebec that were built less than five years ago. My second transaction now is in Mirabel. For those who know Mirabel, first of all, there's an international airport in Mirabel, which is no longer used for passenger use, uh, but it's more uh, of an airport where industrial is very, very popular. So this transaction took place not too far from there. 
Uh, there's also Highway 50 going from Highway 15 that comes into Montreal and going all the way up into uh, Hawkesbury, et cetera, and going all the way up to Ottawa. Uh, so this, this is placed on that axis, and there's a, there's a development right now of a lot of walk-up buildings in that area. So there's a lot of newer build assets. Uh, usually, I'd say three to four stories high walk-up, and some uh, newer multifamily buildings of, say, 20 to 50 units are being built right now. Um, and with elevators, interior, garage spaces. And of course, when you're building these size of assets, you're encouraging uh, commerce. And then you have all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, different companies being installed in services and restaurants and banks and extra, uh, et cetera, gravitating around that. Of course, you have Le Chute also. I have a very nice portfolio for shoot, for a sale right now in Le Chute. Le Chute is exploding right now. And it's, it's an older city village but it has that vibe to it, and it's a it's a center access for for transportation. Um, so, so that access between La Chute and Mirabel is all being built right now. This transaction took place here. Uh, we're talking about 24 units uh, that sold 2018 construction that sold for close to 217 thousand per door. 217 at a cap rate of 4.3, 17 times the gross. Uh, but almost 23 and a half times the net. Uh, so it's interesting to, to, when you're looking at these type of assets, please consider always not necessarily the gross income multiplier, but look at the cap rate versus the price per door. And here I think that in, in, the, in the context, we're rebuilding the same asset would probably cost about 325000 per door. That's almost $100,000 per, uh, per door more, um, almost say one, two, three, four, five, almost five years later. That's an incredible amount of cost that, that's, uh, that you have to consider when you're buying a new asset. So if you could buy something that's a little bit uh, used, if you want, existing in the market, it makes a lot of sense. Let's go into the month of March. I want to talk to you about Bromont. Bromont, uh, first of all, it's a municipality which has a, a brand new sector. It's hyper-developed because there's a ski mountain there. There's a ski hill there. So it's a very similar market to what you would see in, say, say Saint-Sauveur. Um, a lot of new condominiums are being built and a lot of new rentals are being built and, and a lot of, um, of uh, modern restaurants and amenities are being established there. There's a lot of population gravitating in and out of that city and a, a good quality of life because it could be very close to Montreal if you're working from home and still have access to the eastern townships and still have access to the ski hill, to nature, etc. So pe pe people like it very much. Um, this is a 2022 construction, 15 units, sold for close to $285,000 per door at a cap rate of 4.7, say almost 15 times the gross and 21 times, 21 and a half times the net. So I'm still talking about here about four caps. And you'll see that most of my transactions that took place here are in the four cap range, uh, meaning that there's a lot of sustaining in value across time for more recent assets. Not to forget that a lot of my buyers right now, what they're doing is they're taking, either they're picking up the existing loans. The existing loans on these assets sometimes could be very interesting because the, inter the interest rates were lower at the time. So somebody that's assuming the existing loan could first of all, pick up that loan at a lower interest rate, be able to capitalize a lot more in value and create equity much faster than buying a building at 5% interest rate. Also, some of the buyers, what they're doing right now is they're picking up assets that were already financed by the CHMC standardized standard program at the time, but now putting in a new loan into place and going to get the MLI Select Energy Efficiency Cost Program refurbishing uh, the, the building, um, the more recent buildings, refurbishing them to be able to meet the criteria of the CHMC MLI Select uh, Energy Cost Efficiency Program, and then refinancing with 50 years amortization and being able to sometimes get 95% in the loan to value, which is, which is incredible when you're thinking that you could put, buy one of these assets leave a little bit of money into there and being able to have something which is new where capital expenditures are controlled over time, the capacity to increase rents also are, are controlled 
Uh, why? Because you're, there's not that many new build buildings in Quebec right now in the province of Quebec. So they're, they're uh, more or less rare. So when you have one, you're able to increase the rents on it. And there's a lot of popularity. You always have some waiting lists on these type of buildings. Let's go into March. Uh, March was done, sorry. Uh, April. April, let's go to saint charles borromé Joliette, which is in the second outskirts of, uh, first outskirts of Joliette, saint charles de borromé but which is in the second outskirt of Montreal. Um, so... There's a lot of industries in Joliet. Now we're talking about two assets for that uh, sold for a total of uh, almost $53 million, which is a record sale for, uh, uh, sorry, not $53 million, um, uh, 3.5, I was looking at the wrong line, $3.5 million. We're talking about two assets that sold for close to $219,000 per door, almost 15 times the gross, and at a cap rate now this time, of on the lower fives. So we're talking about a 5.3 and a 5.5 cap, which does not uh, demonstrate the standard market for that area, which, which should be in the higher fours, basically 4.7, 4.8. So I think the buyer did a good deal here. And buying a 2021 asset, considering that he still has five years to increase the rents, um, of course, that building is under the, uh, the Tribunal Administratif du Logement regulations, but still there's no limitations on increasing the rents for the first five years in the province of Quebec when you're working with a newer asset like this. So there's definitely a possibility to increase value here. Month of May, I don't have any recent transactions to show to you. Uh, if we go into June, let's talk about a high rise right now, uh, 170 units in Laval on Jean Béraud. Jean Béraud is close to the 15 corner 440 right next to the Cafe Laval, one of the busiest shopping centers in Canada. Um, a lot of towers in that area, uh, 170 units that went for close to $513,000 per door, a uh, transaction that was sold from an, a, a builder directly to an institutional buyer, a uh, transaction that went for close to $87 million. So what we know in Laval is the rents are sustained very, very high. Laval has a big basin of population. Uh, North Shore of Montreal is an, has an enormous basin of population. Uh, and and uh, when you're close to shopping centers like that and close to two major highways in Laval, you could definitely attract a lot of rent. And that this is the case. This is why the buyer purchased this newer asset, which is one of the record sales in that area for almost $512,000 per door. If we continue going down the line here, let's go into month of July and let's go closer to Ottawa, get snow in the Aylmer region. 2023 construction, 32 units sold for almost 226,000 per door. And that's um, very consistent with the newer walk up market in that area that goes for between 330 to $360,000 per door. Uh, what we're seeing in the Elmer area, in the Get Snow area, we're seeing a lot of uh, renters coming from Ottawa ready to cross the river, cross the bridge, do that half an hour, 45-minute drive, and uh, come and, and, and work in, in Ottawa and stay on the other side of the bridge. And that's what's sustaining the rents right now. Of course, we have a lot of populations going in to Get Snow. Get Snow is being hyper-densified right now. Um, they have their own transportation plan. And also they have uh, zoning that permits uh, now buildings that are up to 8 to 10, even 12 uh, stories high in certain cases. So really interesting to see that Get Snow is being developed right now. Uh, development is going to all depend on the infrastructure that the city could, uh, could put in place and how rapidly that could happen. But I could tell you that, that you know, if you have, um, uh, if you're looking for a newer asset and you find something that was built in, say, 2018 and above, and the Elmer gets no, I think it's a good buy. Let's go into the month of August now, and let me finally talk to you about this $53 million worth transaction. It took place in Montreal in the Cote des Neiges area, very popular, close to universities, more on the, like, the western part of the island, close to the Dakari Boulevard. There's a large basin of population in that area, a lot of apartment buildings, but with smaller units, and a lot of apartment buildings that were built in the 60s. Uh, and the 50s. So that what that's why it's so interesting to have a newer asset in Côte d'Enage. You have the mountain that's there also, uh, the, the, the uh, Ville-Montréal mountain, 
uh, the, the Mount Royal Mountain. And of course, you could go from Côte de Neige, go over the mountain and go directly into the city with a nice, beautiful drive across the mountain, which is not that long. We're talking about two buildings here. Um, a purchase that was done uh, by a, a REIT, which is Rio Cant, not to name it here. Uh, 2020 construction, one of the buildings is, an, is a 70 unit, for, sold for close to 431,000 per door. The second building is a 54 unit, uh, 2021 construction sold for close to 427,000 per door. So a beautiful transaction here uh, at close to $53 million worth. And uh, that was done in the month of August at a time where the interest rates were at a history high. Interesting to see that a REIT is diversifying in that direction. A lot of sellers right now, a lot of buyers are, are diversifying. A lot of sellers are diversifying. It's a great time to rethink your plan, and a lot of people are completely changing uh, the direction they're taking right now, and the, I think it's important to do so and to, and to be, really have a portfolio that's well-balanced. Uh, you know, a bit of industrial, a lot of multifamily, some land, some office. You know, as, as long as you evolve and you're able to buy in an area where you're sure that... Uh, Populations can be maintained or increased over time, it's worth it every time. Uh, another transaction now, still for the month of August, in Elmer once again. Uh, now, this time is a 26 unit sold for 308000 per door at a cap rate of 4.3, almost 14.4 times the gross. So, once again, please, when you're working with these transactions, don't, nece don't necessarily look at the gross income multiplier, but go with the net because that's what's left over in your pockets, and always do a correlation with the price per door that you're paying. And this being a 2022 construction, naturally for another five years, uh, sorry, four years, the buyer is going to be able to increase the rents without limitation and then increase per market. And I can tell you that the market in, in that area is booming right now. And a lot of new build built over time is going to permit this buyer to sustain high value in rents over time also. Month of September, we're going to Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke, the learning uh, university city located south of Montreal, uh, much south of Montreal, closer to the border. Now we have a 2018 construction, 18 units, sold for $306,000 per door. So we see like a certain tendency to, to gravitate uh, in the $300,000 range, considering that that same asset being built today would be more like 367 in that area. I know because I just evaluated a project that's uh, eventually going to come out in the market in that area at that price. October, uh, back to Quebec City, 24 units, 2016 construction. This one went for $223,000 per door, 25 times in that. That's a cap rate of four at uh, almost 14.8 times the gross income multiplier. Private investor sold to private investor here. Month of November gets no. On the, Du Plateau, Du Plateau is an area which is, is very much in demand. Uh, there's a whole shopping center and lifestyle center which is right smack beside it. You have uh, the library which is there, which is their lifestyle center, restaurants, etc. Uh, everything is right there. It's a new district. 2023 construction, 99 units sold for close to $360,000 per door. We're talking about a transaction of almost $35 million dollars. With Soto REIT, REITs have large interests on high value areas. And, you know, most of the REITs were looking for 200 doors and above. Now we have a transactions of 99 doors here. So for those who thought that REITs were on the sidelines and institutional players were on the sidelines in 2023, not the case. I have several transactions that were done by REITs and institutional players. It's all a question of opportunity and being segment, being located at the right place at the right time and being able to change rapidly your purchasing and selling strategy is super important in a market that's going to be changing more and more over time. Last and not least, the Group UA transaction. Uh, for those who know, it was, it was in the media, a, gr a group that had a lot of difficulty and th that, uh, that sold 2014-2017 uh, uh, construction buildings, a large number 
of, uh, of units that were sold for $245 million. And this time it's a group Mac that bought. Mac is very, very active on the market. Uh, they're doing uh, many construction projects in Montreal. And uh, it was, I think it was just logical for them to add value in, in Quebec City and be able to uh, develop even more the Quebec City market uh, for them is, is uh, really a demonstration how, how strong the Montreal market is, but also how strong the Quebec City market is as far as value and rental value. So I hope this information was interesting for you. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of new build projects were on standby. The, uh, the, uh, there's the MLI Select uh, Energy Efficiency Cost um, program that's been sustaining a lot of and giving a lot of value uh, for people that want to build newer buildings. There's an RCFI program also from a CHMC. Go see the CHMC website and check out the financing possibilities. Give me a call if ever you have any questions at all on the real estate and the multifamily market. Pieces of land, a lot of land was sold this year also. Uh, you could see it in one of my other videos. I'm going to be talking about land there. So land retention is important to be able to develop and considering that it takes a few years to develop. But there's a lot of projects that were sold this year with permits given or almost given. So it's going to be interesting to see all along the year, what's going to be built, what's going to be built in 2025, and how the value of these newer and more recent assets are going to maintain over time. I wish you a lot of success in your real estate ventures, and I'll see you next time. Take care.